that will cause you about that later. <laughs> um, so I'm going to largely introduce um, the Electric Sheep Company. The Electric Sheep Company is a company that started in, gosh, in 2005. So it's been quite a while now. I previously was doing computational linguistics research and had a different software company doing that. So, but I got really fascinated with uh, the idea of um, virtual worlds, which have been around for a long time. Um, and I have a lot to say about that, but uh, virtual worlds have been around for decades. But I got really excited uh, five or six years ago with the idea that the internet and broadband computers were getting to the point where, uh, while they can't open a PowerPoint slide in less than 30 seconds, uh, they could do a lot more with 3D and connecting people around the world. Uh, and so I was really interested in playing with that, seeing where it could go, and, and thinking that there could be a business there also uh, that, that could sustain that. Using fonts, I don't know if there's any text in this. <laughs> so, uh, that's why you're missing. <laughs> Surely you meant to write something in this presentation. Um, so, Electric Sheep Company started, like I said, in about 2005, and Second Life was a tool, of course, that came out um, a little while before then, but was gathering some steam. And, and uh, it really, Second Life really ignited um, uh, a new. Uh, commercial interest in virtual worlds and exploratory interest in virtual worlds because it's so easy to create in Second Life. And it's not that easy to present what you create to people, which is ultimately why uh, we're not all using it. But uh, it is uh, a wonderful creation tool. And we, we've done all kinds of projects uh, in Second Life and building separate virtual worlds using more conventional technology. Um, and I'll get lastly to what we're doing now and what's come out of it. So we really spent a few years doing a lot of random things in virtual worlds um, for other companies uh, because they were just interested in figuring all these things out what they were good for. This was a, uh, an MMO we made in Second Life that was for the zombie movie I Am Legend. So as that was coming out, we made these uh, ways that people could run around being zombie dogs or zombies and human dogs or real dogs and, and humans and, and try to get each other. Um, uh, we did a lot of musical and music related events, which I'm going to come back to in Second Life. Uh, so we were always making celebrity uh, avatars, it's 50 Cent over there, uh, which he was um, talking at this event, uh, and really made a wide variety. I, I, I want to dig back out these days the Charlie Sheen avatar uh, that we made, because we could really make some funny machinima these days. Um, with, with the things we did in Second Life around him. Uh, we also did a lot around uh, uh, some television shows. This was for um, MTV's reality shows like Laguna Beach and such. We made all these. So when, when the characters in the reality show were going to their winter formal, you know, you'd have a winter formal in the virtual world. Uh, probably our biggest project was this um, for CSI New York and really. Uh, an amazing, fascinating project, the, the, the biggest one we did in Second Life, I should say. Um, where, uh, let's see if I have um, another picture of that, but I might actually quickly show a video here um, and talk over top of it. Let me see if I, uh, so we helped film two episodes of the television show CSI New York. And, um, sponsored by Cisco. Uh, and there, it, it was having to be a two parter, and as luck would have it, um, the two-parter ended up spanning the writer's strike that happened a few years ago, you may remember, when the no new television shows were coming out. So it was pretty cool that uh, the, it ended up being like a six-month cliffhanger and we got to do all kinds of things in the virtual world to keep the story going in the meantime. But we, anyway, we filmed these two episodes where there was a serial killer that was supposedly like, tracking people down in Second Life and then killing them and then pretending to be them in their virtual world and doing things you can't actually do with Second Life. Uh, and so we uh, shot all this uh, footage that they put together in about half an hour of, of HD footage from the virtual world. It was machinima like this, including Gary Sinise's character, you know, running around in the virtual world and trying to solve the crime. And it was all uh, a little absurd, and we were pretty surprised they put it on television. But uh, we had a lot of fun with it. So we did a lot of things like that. Um, so some projects with, with CBS uh, in particular. And then. Um, some great, some great prototypes of things we could do with sports. We did some basketball stuff and some baseball things as well. But um, it's a little fuzzy here, but we, we simulated some Yankees Red Sox games. There were actual live games going on. So we had over in the, uh, the scoreboard was the ESPN feed of the game, 
and then you can come and sit in the stands, you know, and get your foam fingers and your popcorn and throw the popcorn and do lots of other random things. And uh, this was actually the Yankee Stadium that now exists, but we built this in Second Life before ground was broken um, to look like the real stadium. And then we had all these bobblehead characters that were automatically driven off of the play-by-play -play feed that came over the internet. And, and a very funny sort of uh, life imitates art uh, thing that we didn't, we didn't know until we turned all this on for the first baseball game was that actually uh, the lag in um, television filming what goes on in the stadium and broadcasting it and then sending that over the internet um, to people's computers, you know, in the scoreboard through ESPN was actually slower than someone in the stadium typing the play-by-play -play and our software automatically get that, getting that and moving the characters around. So if you were sitting in the virtual stadium, you would first see, you know, the Derek Jeter bobblehead avatar hit a single and then it would happen on television uh, a few seconds later, uh, which ended up being pretty fun. And then of course people rode kayaks you know, out uh, around this, because it was an, everything's on an island in Second Life, um, so they could catch the fly balls and had lots of other good emergent behavior. We did a bunch of events uh, for the L Word, uh, the television show that ran for several years and had a whole ongoing community um, in this virtual world, and it was pretty fun. And then I'll just say a couple other sentences here, which is that we, we had this wonderful run there of doing a lot of things uh, in other virtual worlds as well as uh, Second Life, and uh, there was this you know, craze that didn't make a whole lot of sense for a couple of years there, all these companies trying to get pressed by doing uh, really wacky things. Uh, and so we got to do a lot of those. So that was really fun and experimental, but we learned a lot through that about what was powerful about virtual worlds and what isn't, and what doesn't make sense to do there. And so now we've been trying to take that, and we ended up building our own technology for web-based virtual worlds because we think that uh, it's a lot more accessible to a lot, uh, large number of people. We've done some kids' virtual worlds, like this one around toy cars that um, these guys are putting out a whole bunch of cars for the Cars 2 movie that's just coming out. Um, but if I can get back to, uh, we got logged out here, but I just got my avatar. Um, I'll try to see if I can, it's a little slow earlier, but I'll see if I can uh, reload and get back in. This is an app called Stream Jam, which you mentioned earlier. So what we really realized is we put on probably 150 live events, a lot with music, but some with authors, some with actors and actresses and virtual worlds. And it was very powerful having people together experiencing those events. So even though they were, in a lot of cases, just video that was being streamed, which you can do on a web page, um, in fact, when you get into a live event, there's a bunch of people there and you're experiencing it together. Uh, we see people stay at events a lot longer and start talking to each other a lot more than they do just on a web page with a chat box. Uh, and so uh, we're trying to, uh, we have created this virtual uh, venue called Stream Jam that anyone can put on their own website and stream live video of an event into and we're marketing that to the music industry uh, to make this sort of an ongoing festival of all kinds of music events. There's stream in there where then people can play games and dance. And, and uh, as Ken pointed out to me on the way up here, it, it's actually a concert that you can talk at because um, you can turn the volume of the, uh, of the music down just enough uh, to have a conversation. So we'll see if it pops back up and, and gets us into It's all slow because we're, I presume, because we're you know, streaming out and streaming in and all that. But um, it'll show you stream time. So uh, I went too long there, but you got an idea of what we did.